Hello and welcome back to Sam's News. Robots like R2-D2 in Star Wars or K9 in Doctor Who have long been the stars of science fiction. But now robots are stepping out of their spaceships and time machines and into the real world of cutting-edge scientific research. Scientists here at Sam's and Oban have just announced the opening of the brand new Scottish Marine Robotics Facility a new home for their expanding fleets of research robots, helping them to study global oceans above and below the waves. So let's go and meet one of the hard-working underwater robots, or sea gliders, like this one, who has just returned from a very long mission. And um, we're here to find out about the glider who just returned home. Hi, Vi. Uh, yes, so this is Jura. So Jura has been in the water for uh, over six months, actually, 201 days, which is our personal record that time so far. So what was Jura doing in her 201 days of work? Uh, well, if you follow me into mission control, I can show you on the screen uh, where she's been. Jura was deployed in July last year at this point here on the OSNAP line, and then she's been doing some transects back and forth over the summer and the autumn and then she's made her way back all across the Rockall Trough and back up here in the Herbodies where she had to wait for several weeks um, for the bad weather to pass so that we can go and recover her. So what are the advantages of using gliders? So we can put the gliders in the water from close by to us here, we can put them in off a big ship and then they go off and do their thing. They're there for up to six months collecting temperature salinity data for us amongst other things. Uh, they save us a lot of money because being out on the ships is very expensive as well as often being quite unpleasant during the winter. So it means that we can get data all year through. So uh, gliders are very energy efficient, they last for about six months in the water and the secret, the secret to that is that they use a system of ballast to move through the water instead of a propeller which uses a lot more energy. So you can see right here at the back of the glider we've got this uh, sort of bladder here which is currently full of oil. When it's fully inflated like this uh, the glider will be fully buoyant and stay at the surface of the water and then uh, the glider is going to send a command to put the oil back inside the glider and that's going to make the glider very dense and it's slowly going to dive down in the water when it's at the bottom, it's going to inflate the bladder and it's going to slowly move back up again. We can go out on the small boats and put them off just outside the Hebrides. We literally lower them over the side of the boat. Someone back here checks they work and we come home and the glider goes off. Out in the deeper ocean, if we're further away, we can do it off the side of big ships and they'll go off and three, four, six months later, another big ship will come back and the glider will be where we tell it to be and it gets scooped up out of the water. They're fantastically easy to put in and out of the water. We operate seven gliders at the moment. Uh, up to last year we only had two of them and last year we got five, an extra five of them. So we've got a lot more missions nowadays, so we need um, to train up new pilots, which is what we're going to do tomorrow on Shamara, as well as testing our glider Lafroig. So welcome back. So today we're deploying Lafroy from Shomara to test her and make sure everything is okay. Uh, Karen and Fraser are out on the boat right now and I'm here back in Mission Control to uh, do the piloting. Hey Karen. Uh, yes, I've been through the data. All the files look okay so you can deploy. Yeah. Okay, just give me a call back when uh, she's in the water. Cheers. We've had the, the go from the pilot. Everything's okay from the uh, files have been sent back, it's communicating well, the bladders inflating, deflating, all the mechanics inside are operating as they should be. Um, yeah, and once we've got this panel rebuilt, then she's ready to go in. Uh, right now, uh, I've given the okay for the field team to launch the glider in the water, and then once she's uh, ready, we're going to send her diving for the very first dive. So the North Atlantic Glider Base is one element of the new Scottish Marine Robotics Facility that we've set up at SAMS. And this facility uh, gathers together all our robotic uh, systems, our autonomous systems, um, but also the expertise in being able to handle the data and apply it to science projects. And the facility includes such things, obviously the gliders, but also the aircraft that we have, uh, the autonomous underwater vehicles, remotely operated vehicles, some of the polar technology for gathering data from the polar regions, drifters, uh, and more in capability as well. Um, Estelle's back at the lab, controlling the glider now. Um, 
which will take it for a, a couple of short dives, probably only about 10 metres. Just checking that everything's operating correctly and then she'll take it down deeper. Here, the maximum depth round about here is only 60 metres. So we won't get a full depth dive, but it'll be enough just to check that the, the pitch of the roll and the buoyancy is correct. So, unfortunately we now get to sit and wait for about five hours. That's the glider come up from its uh, last dive and we're now just going to go pick it up. So it's just ahead of us. Uh, it's done approximately six dives today and we've been just told from the pilot that uh, everything's okay and she's happy for us to come pick it up. Trials went quite well and we're ready to deploy off the Elite Line cruise later this year. You can have a look at the live data on our website where all our gliders are listed. Um, that's uh, velocity.sam.ac.uk.